I'll sleep with you. He hugs you tight and nearly smothers you with his muscles. You're not making that sound so bad. I would like to be smothered, sm smoth, sm sm smothered with his muscles. Warning. This game contains content that may be disturbing or triggering to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'm going to play the updated version of Don't Hide. Oh god. You can't believe it. You're outside. You made it. You have tears of joy in your eyes. When was the last time you breathed fresh air? You don't even remember how long he locked you in that darn house. But right now, you don't care. You're outside, and that's what matters. You can feel the wind and the cold on your skin. You're so happy. You feel like you're dreaming. You're finally free. No, wait. Hold on. Don't scream victory too soon. It's possible, even certain, that he already knows that you've escaped. Besides, you're still in the middle of nowhere. You're tired, and you're cold. You're vulnerable, and clearly not at your best. If he catches you, it's over. And knowing how careful he is, you'll never have this chance to escape again. Focus. You don't have much time. Hmm. You hear noises in the distance. It's him. He knows. Um, um, let's see. Last time, running did not help, so I think I should look around. There's not much to look at. You're in a fairly dense forest. You have no idea how many kilometers you have to travel to get out of here. Behind you is the dwelling where he kept you. The moon gives you a little bit of light. It's still dark, though. And chilly. You're not dressed to fight the winter cold. At least it's not raining. You don't have time to examine anything else. The noises come closer to you. Um, 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 um. Right, running didn't do anything, hiding didn't do anything. I think I faced him. You know he's right behind you, but you decide to gather your courage and face him. You're pretty sure you couldn't be able to fight him, but hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> can, can we talk? Can we work something out? You have beautiful eyes. Ah. It's funny how all determination can fly away the second you meet your kidnapper's gaze. Darn it. You take what little courage you have left to not tremble in front of him. There you are. <laughs> yeah, you just want to disappear. Hmm. I finally found you. You are reassured he doesn't seem angry. Annoyed, yes, but not angry. You swallow anyway. You don't know what's going to happen next. But the fact that he does nothing does not reassure you. I, uh, I'm sorry. Hmm? I won't do it again. I mean, I will never run away again. I swear. Are you sure about that? No! You don't answer, and he sighs. Even if he's not angry, you can tell he's upset. So, why did you do that? What? Isn't it obvious? You didn't expect to explain that. You seek after your words. Why? Well, don't you think this question is a bit weird? Who would like to be locked up and held prisoner? Staying in a place against their will? With someone who scares them, no less. I scare you. What? Of course! Mm -hmm. You are dumbfounded. There's no way he's serious, right? You can't believe he looks so pained when the victim here is you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. How? You literally kidnapped me. Mm. You don't know what to say. He tilts his head to the side. I swear, I would never hurt you. Uh, never hurt you? Well, yeah. It's true, he's never harmed you. Oddly enough, especially in that kind of situation, the worst thing he ever did to you was, well, kidnapping you. The realization makes you shiver. He could have done anything to you. You guess you could have run into a much worse captor, that's for sure. But you're still a captive, and you ain't happy about it. 
You can't believe you're gonna say this, but... Thank you for being nice to me. I'm grateful to you. I mean it. But I already told you, I don't want to stay here. He's fidgeting. He doesn't like where the conversation is going. You must stay with me. I'm not asking you to understand. Just, please, you have to trust me. But for now, we have to go back home. Please, now. Uh, let me just save, because I don't remember what I did. All right, what if I refuse? You'll never feel at home in this place. It's not possible. You can't. No, I refuse. You step back. You don't know how he might react. Especially since he looks more and more agitated. <clears throat> Please, listen. I know you won't like what I'm about to say, but... I want to go home. I mean, my home. You, you have to let me go. I'm begging you. He looks even more unstable now. Ooh. You knew it. There was no way he could take it well. Arguing is useless with him. You should have run away and never looked back. That doesn't work. I, uh... I promise I won't tell a soul about you. I just want to go back to my normal life. If you... You don't have time to finish your sentence. Then he rushes at you. Oh no! You narrowly dodge him. And how fortunate. Otherwise he would have tackled you. To your surprise, he doesn't try to charge you a second time. He just stares at you, staying in the same place. Dang. It's not good. You're in a state of complete panic now. Sir, listen here. You. He's shaking. Is he angry? You can't tell, but his calm voice contrasts with his relentlessness. I don't understand. I gave you everything, and I will continue to give you everything you desire. All the things you want. All the things you need. I can give you a perfect life. No one else besides me would be able to do that for you. So... I'm just asking you one thing. I'm the one who implores you. Let's go home. His voice sounds weird. He's losing his composure, you guess. It's eerie, and you feel terribly uncomfortable. The whole situation is too much for you. I just want you to stay with me. I would do anything for you. You want to tell him that the only thing you really want is your freedom. He's too desperate to comprehend that. You know he'll never stop to track you. It's a lost cause. I... Let's see, I think crying just got me knocked out. So what if I fight? What if I throw some hands? What am I like, put, put him up, sir. Put him up. Or more accurately, put him up. Put, put him up, sir. I imagine he's very, very tall. Even if he can't get it, you can't give up your freedom. You could never do that. He gives you no choice. You have to fight him. You're not naive, though. You know you have no chance of winning against him, especially in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But at least he'll see that you don't intend to make it easy for him. And if you have to fight until the very end, so be it. He will eventually get tired of you, or kill you, in the end anyway. And you won't be suffocated because of a pseudo-lovesick psychotic dude anymore. Hmm. Maybe if you play your cards right. Hmm. You try to hide your intentions while approaching him. You must take him by surprise. It's your only chance. Love? He distrusts you. It's not surprising. It's obvious that you have an idea in mind. The more you advance, the more he retreats. <laughs> what are you doing? His reaction? You never expected him to appear so anxious. Let alone because of you. Funny how the tables have turned. Seeing him like this makes you feel somehow powerful, if you dare to say. The problem is that this turnaround gave you a little bit too much confidence. I will be hoisted on my own petard for my bravado and my hubris. Especially considering what you're about to do. You jump on him. Wah! 
You don't think and do the first thing that comes to mind. You take the biggest impulse you're capable of and give him a right hook. Bam! Which is probably just the Spongebob <laughs> squeak noise on his face. What the... He grabs your wrist midair. All right, everything goes poorly. Moreover, it sure is anticlimactic. Oh, did I not even land a punch? <clears throat> the worst is that you put all of your strength into it, and he had absolutely no difficulty intercepting it. Okay. Show off. You don't know whether to laugh or cry. Besides, he too does not know how to react. I would laugh. I would find it hilarious. He's too confused to retaliate. You take the opportunity to trip him up. Your leg throws him off balance, and you both fall down to the ground. The ball is in your court. You have to try and handicap him. You use your body as dead weight on him to keep him from moving. I probably weigh the amount of a feather compared to him. He just scoops me up with one hand. Okay, what are you doing? Just picks me up like a basketball with one hand. You're all over him. Now he can't move anymore. Bingo. He, he just gets right up, doesn't he? Did he just shove you off? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, no. This isn't exactly where I wanted to be. <laughs> well, that sure didn't exactly work in your favor. Looks like you just forgot that you did, in fact, attack the strongest guy you've ever met in your entire life. Your fault for throwing hands with a bodyguard. Classic espoir faux pas. <laughs> eh, lucky you. He sighs and gets up. He reaches out his hand to help you. Mm. Thank you. As expected, the whole escape was a failure. You should have guessed that nothing would have gone as planned. But at least he still doesn't look mad at you. Very well. It could be worse. Yeah. It could be worse. So? What's that smirk for, sir? Hmm? What was that? Shut up! It was my feeble attempt of being a tough gal. I am strong. You don't even know. An almost successful escape attempt? Irony is your best friend when you have nothing left to lose. Aha. Successful. You're sure you could have nearly frozen to death at some point. Even if you would have succeeded, I would have brought you back. You're not fazed by what he said. I know. You know? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Suppose you managed to escape. It would have only have been a matter of time for him before he finds you. Again. Hmm. You're so reckless. I congratulate you for trying. That was kind of brave. Thank you. That's all I wanted was a little recognition for my bravado. But never do that again. You definitely won't try again. Look at how he handled your sorry butt cheeks. Ugh. Disgraceful. I have to admit, I'm impressed that you thought you could beat me. I knew I had no chance against you. But I was thinking that maybe, just maybe, if you knew how I desperately wanted to be free, maybe you would have let me go. He lets out a laugh. It's surprising. It's unusual to hear him chuckle. <laughs> nah, impossible. I love you too much for that. Uh, why? I've never did anything for you to like me. Very quickly, he says, you really don't get it, do you? I saw that. I, I just used the history to, s to see that. But I saw that. What am I not understanding? I'll tell you later. But for now, we're going home. Um, okay. You would like to tell him that if he loved you so much, he would give you your liberty back. But for now, you'd rather not confront him anymore. Especially with your weak body that doesn't have an ounce of strength. Besides, you thank your lucky stars that your jailer is not the type to have easy grudges. And this is with these wise thoughts that you return to your new... home. Hmm. Oh, a stick! Hey, friend! I found a stick! Stick. Can I have the stick? He leads the way with confident steps, holding your hand in his, unless I grab this stick. 
and as I grabbed the stick. Stick, 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 stick. Le me grabbed a stick. 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 I will grab the stick. Let me grab the stick. You pick up the conveniently placed branch. If you can't beat him fair, might as well play it dirty. You're kind of ashamed, but well, once again, you have no choice. Unfortunately for you, Game Espoir, I know this, this is not going to work. Like many times that night, you don't think twice and attack him while his back is turned. And you aim for the head. Very good. And he didn't, he didn't move, did he? He didn't do a thing. He's, oh, oh, he's just mad now. Um, is it too late to say I'm sorry? No. Fluffing. Way! He barely budges. But more importantly, how the heck can he still be conscious? It didn't do anything to him? You struck him in the back of his skull, for God's sake. He walks slowly towards you. It can't be. At some point, he'll fall. Right? What is he? Oh, f And you don't even have time to react. You can't even understand what's going on. Is he carrying you? Oh no. He's taking you back to this fluffing house. Not the fluffing house. Well, at least he didn't use chloroform. At least he just used his good old fists. Ah, oof. Did you fall asleep? No. Your head is hurting you. You feel so fuzzy. You guess you just got knocked out. If so, that would be normal to be off. You try to move. Okay. Impossible. Oh no. You are attached. All your limbs are strained. And that headache doesn't help. Everything is throbbing. You can't think straight. Yeah. Big oof. Mm. I promise I will never hurt you. Ha <laughs> ha. And to think that he had the nerve to say that. Even if you attacked him first, it was absolutely not deserved. At the very least, you should be glad he didn't kill you by now. It's a little bit deserved. I mean, I did thwack my boy with a, with a big old branch. You sigh. Everything still hurts. You slowly try to lift your head and open your eyes. Oh no! I'm in the place I don't want to be and he's doing the pose that I like. Hi. Welp. <laughs> there are a lot of times in this game where this is just exactly what I would say to myself. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to see that he's very ticked off. Um, no hard feelings? Sorry about bashing you with a branch and and tackling you to the ground and, you know, and I'm trying to throw the good old fisticuffs with you, sir? I mean, I knocked you out. Well, I tried. You knocked me out. We're even. You can't believe you have the audacity to joke. Oh, I would have much audacity to joke. <laughs> Wait. Where did he take you, by the way? A cellar? You've never been here. You mad, bro? You mad? Okay. I can understand if you're a little bit angry with me, but you seem, uh... You seem to be alright. You got, you got that bandaged up. You got that cleaned up, fixed. Is your head okay? Because mine's not. Thank you for the headache. You could have hit me softer. What is this room anyway? Why did you bring me here? Uh. Hey. Say something. Say something! Please say something. What, the cold shoulder? Are you for real? Seriously? You're the one who should be giving him the cold shoulder, not otherwise. Jeez. Alright, alright. Calm down. Maybe... Wait a second. You suddenly have cold sweats. You can't move your legs. No way. What the heck? Oh. Did you do something to my footsies? What have you done? Your ankles. You're gonna puke. 
Did you mangle my cute little ankles? He... They're sewn together, and your skin seems to be melted in some places. Ooh. How did I sleep through that? They're glued together. And you have a bandage, too. You don't have the guts to ask him why he bandaged it. You look away, impossible for you to watch your limbs bruised like this. You close your eyes as hard as you can. You don't know if you want to scream or cry. Or make jokes about now being a mermaid. Maybe you're already doing both. You can't tell. You want to pass out. You start shaking. You're in shock. It can't be real. What the heck is this nightmare? What has he done? What has he done? What has he done? You hear him get up and walk past you. He doesn't have time to go behind you, but you suddenly open your eyes and glare at him. Listen here, cutie pie. If I wasn't tied up, I would have ripped your throat out with my teeth. I hate you. You'll pay for it, I can assure you. I'm gonna find where you sleep and put your hand in some warm water. He's out of your sight before you can finish your sentence, and the last thing you feel before passing out is a sting on your neck. Ah! How dare you. Being jolted awake is awful, but what's worse is that you remember everything. Your ankle is still numb, and that's probably the only good thing about your situation. Speaking of ankles, you still don't dare to look at them. At least, you don't feel anything. He probably drugged you or something. You wonder if you would still be able to stand up. Probably not. You can't believe he mutilated you. The bastard! Gonna pour water on his face when he's sleeping! He wants you to be dependent on him. At this thought, your hatred towards him grows. Ugh. Even if your ankles don't hurt, your arms, on the other hand... Being tied up for that long doesn't help, and as if there wasn't enough, you need to go to the bathroom. Aw, oh, man! Ugh. God peered out of the cloud and said, Oh, I hate you, Espoir. If you're tied up, your feet are all bugged up. Now you have to pee. You're living your best life now. It's all sunshine and roses. You hear footsteps in the side hallway. Here he is. Yippee! Listen, you! He approaches you and examines your ankles. He hums with satisfaction and puts them down. Good morning. How do you feel? Are you in pain? Numb? I have painkillers, if you want. I gotta- do it. I gotta pee. I'm gonna save my game, but- <laughs> Gosh darn it, that's hilarious. Oh, I, um, dang it, that's so hilarious. You lost me at good morning. And fluff you, by the way. I know I need to pee, but that, oh, that is, oh, that is bitingly, bitingly hilarious. He sighs and leaves immediately. Wait, no, I still have to pay. You get back here. Maybe you should have told him you needed to take a leak. Whatever. You decide to take a nap. Time will pass faster that way. You gonna- you gonna bring me some food or something, dude? Dude! Ah, here we go again. You don't give him time to talk. I need to pay! If he ever dares to give you a bucket, you'll have one more reason to slaughter him. <laughs> Apparently, it's not something he thought about, because he's starting to untie your ties. He takes you by the shoulders and makes you stand up. Oof. Oh, God. Well, now you know what it's like to stand with your ankles stitched. Well, I mean, at, at least he didn't, like, crush them, or break them, or, like, put a drill in them, unlike some people. He just stitched them together. At least he didn't cut them off like some other people. But, you know, I guess stitching them together is it's kind of a jerk move. He notices your discomfort and decides to carry you. Which is nice, by the way, because you are indeed in the basement. You could never have climbed those stairs on your own. While he takes you to the bathroom, you decide to talk to him. 
Why did you destroy my ankles? Why did you do this to me? It couldn't have been avoided. That doesn't answer my question. You attacked me. So, you wanted to punish me? No. What do you mean, no? You sewed me up and melted my ankles together. Who does that? That's a new one. He stops walking for a moment and seems pensive. To be honest, I wanted to cut them off, but I don't have the medical knowledge to perform such a surgery. Dude! You prefer not to add anything. I didn't do this to punish you. I wanted to make sure you couldn't run away anymore. Well, now I'm just gonna crawl away. However, if you still try, well, I'll just bring you back. And I'll do it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. But I guess now you'll have a little more trouble running away, won't you? He says that so calmly. He's awful. I have to admit, I thought you would have attacked me long before. Anyway, we've arrived. He drops you off in front of the toilet and stays with you inside. Can I have some privacy? He looks at you blankly. <laughs> no. Alright, I figured. Dude! It's okay, just pretend he's not there. Hmm? Hmm. You didn't realize it earlier, but... But your arms. And not just your arms, but your hands, too. You can't move them properly anymore. Oh no. They're like... An... Anest... and Anesthetize. He used anesthesia on them. You don't know if it's because of the drugs he gave you, or if it's because they've been tied up for so long. But your upper limbs don't listen to you anymore. Oh no, how are you gonna... He frowned. No way. You'll have to ask him for help. Okay. Alright. That's fine. You try again to move your arms without success. Okay. You raise your head to look at him. He doesn't seem to have understood the situation because he's looking at you with a raised eyebrow. What? Dang. That's humiliating. I can't quite move my arms. I can't... You know. He approaches you and leans you on the toilet seat. He gets on his knees and pulls your pants down. You sit and you can finally pee. You stare at your hands and pray to finish quickly. You've never put yourself in such an awkward situation in your entire life. You can't even look at him. See, this is, what, this is what all these kidnappers forget to think about. What are you gonna do when I need to pee? You can't even look at him. This is the longest moment of your life! You keep looking down at your hands. You feel your cheeks burning as you finish. I, uh, I'm done. He picks you up and takes a piece of toilet paper. What the- You close your legs. And you try to control your breathing. You don't want me to? No! I mean, no. I'm okay. I don't mind. I'm okay! You're not okay at all. Dude, you're so embarrassed you just want to die. You can't believe he was about to do that. As you wish. He shrugs casually and pulls your pants up. But in doing that, he goes against the abused skin of your ankle. You let out a yelp. Yelp! Looks like the drugs or painkillers or whatever you're on won't work for long anymore. Are you alright? My legs, he whimpered. I'll try to be more careful. A small thank you is all you could whisper. I'm tired. He carries you to the bedroom. Oh no, not the bedroom. You're grateful he's not taking you back to the basement. He puts you on the bed, kisses you, and then is about to go to another room for you to rest. It always freaks you out when he acts that way. Even if he does nothing more than that, no matter what he thinks. We're not lovers. You had to say it. He stops and leans on the wall. He takes a second to process your statement and nods slowly. Of course. How could I forget? 
<laughs> you should sleep. You've had a hard day. He takes one last look at your ankle before leaving. You lie down on the bed and stay still for a while. You put yourself on your forearms and you move your feet. It looks like you're regaining your mobility, which means you'll soon feel pain. So, is that what your life is about now? You'll depend on him for everything. Am I just a mermaid now? You'll depend on him and for everything. <sighs> you hide your face in your pillow, and you laugh. You try to stifle them in your pillow, but you have a hard time containing your giggling. Seriously, what a day! And you're so exhausted. You're about to fall asleep when the bedroom door opens. Well, looks like the day's not over yet. I'll sleep with you. Listen here, sir. <clears throat> sure. Whatever. You don't even care anymore. Anyway, you wouldn't even have time to protest that he's already in your bed. I hope you won't take my blanket. He hugs you tight and nearly smothers you with his muscles. Now, narrator, you're not... You're not making that sound so bad. I would like to be smothered, smith, 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 smothered with his muscles. But then again, he did mermaid my legs, so that's that's kind of that's kind of not cool. Oof! It's gonna be a long night. Ending eight. The time of your life. <laughs> good ending. That's the good ending. <laughs> well, shoot. All right. What if, what if what if I'm not so rude and uh, I just tell him right off the bat, I need to pee, my dude. I, I gotta go tittle. Piddle. Tittle? Piddle? Piddle. Right now? Yeah. He passes behind you and begins to loosen your ties. He takes you by the shoulders and makes you stand up. This is... numb. Your ankles, your feet, your legs, everything is numb. Now you know what it's like to be on drugs. Ugh. You hate him so much. He notices your discomfort and decides to carry you. It's the least you could do after what he did to you. He takes you to the bathroom. You prefer to remain silent. He, on the other hand, decided otherwise. How do you feel? You don't want to answer him. No, you're the one who gives me the cold shoulder. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Come on, say something. You sewed me up. He stops walking. He looks at you, but seems pensive. I wanted to do more than that, but I don't have the medical knowledge to perform such surgery. You almost choke. He's serious, no doubt about that. And you'd rather not think too much about what he had in mind or what he would have wanted to do to you. You feel relieved that you see the bathroom door. Here. He drops you off in front of the toilet, and stays with you inside. Mm. Can I have some privacy? He looks at you blankly. No. <clears throat> he puts you on the bed, kisses you, and then is about to go to another room for you to rest. It always freaks you out when he acts that way. Even if he does nothing more than that. I hate you. You had to say it. He stops and looks at you blankly. Well, it figures. Mm. You should sleep. You've had a hard day. He takes one last look at your ankle before leaving. You hide your face in your pillow, and you scream. You try to muffle them in your pillow. If this continues, you'll lose your mind. It's a nightmare. There are no other words to describe what you're going through. Gosh, you're so exhausted. You're about to fall asleep when the bedroom door opens. Looks like the day is not over yet. Can't he leave you alone for two fluffing seconds? I'll sleep with you. You give him a death glare. Protesting would be useless. Anyway, he's already in your bed. He hugs you tight and doesn't let go. It's gonna be a long night. The worst day of your life.
Eh, game over. <laughs> Aww. Alright. All of that came from trying to fight my way out of it. I can't remember. What happens if I cry? If I cr cry... Don't put me back in the thing. I don't wanna. <laughs> That's enough. You can't take it anymore. It's more than you can handle. It's beyond your strength. You'll never be able to escape him. You don't even know why you're still trying. You are exhausted. You fall on your knees. Your mind is no longer clear. It's over. It's all over. Goodness, Espoir. Never give up. You can't even pull yourself together anymore. You've never felt that hopeless. His hair is constantly in your eyes. You sob. <laughs> you feel miserable. And to think that not even two minutes ago you wanted to stand for yourself. It's pitifully sad. You overestimated yourself. To these thoughts, you sob again. He stares down at you. Everything is blurry, but you can still see him. He's heading in your direction. He slowly approaches you and puts one knee on the ground. Hey. His voice is surprisingly soft. He seems so gentle. I really like this music playing right now. It adds to my tears. You're tired. I know it's not easy for you. The whole situation is new to you, and it's okay to feel down. But you have to understand that I'm doing all of this for your sake. He places a comforting hand on your shoulder, and you just want to scream. But you don't do anything anymore. You know, at this precise moment, that you will never have the courage to try to run away again. You've lost. Give us time. You'll see. I'll take good care of you. He calmly grabs you by the shoulders, without any difficulty. He puts you back on your two feet. Your legs are just wobbling, though. He notices and therefore decides to carry you. He doesn't seem at all bothered by your weight. It shows once again the difference in strength there is between you two. So, on second thought, throwing hands with him would have just been hilarious. And it was. You want to laugh. You start to feel delirious. It's okay. It's a new life that's offered to us. You'll get used to it. I promise. <laughs> Deep down, you really hope he's right. Ending three. You lose it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think bargaining with him. I don't know if this is going to lead to anything new. Editor to me, if it doesn't, you can just cut it out, but listen, 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 buddy. Listen here. Listen. You listening? Okay, you'll have to negotiate. Let's see if your plan is going to work. You said you wanted me happy, right? I want to leave, but you refuse to let me go. How can I be happy if you keep me somewhere I don't want to be? He's silent for a few seconds. I'll never leave you. I know. That's why I have an idea that might work for the both of us. If he honestly tells the truth, and the only thing he really wants is you, and only you, he couldn't deny your proposal. Hmm? Come with me. What? I can't stand to stay here. You will do what it takes to return to civilization. Your priority is to escape from this forest, and if for that you have to invite him where you live, so be it. Let's leave this place and come with me. What exactly do you mean by that? It means what it means. I'll welcome you to my home, we will live in my apartment, and, well... We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh. And we will always stay together, I guess. Isn't that what you wanted? Mm-hmm. Ah. You already regret this decision. Says you, Espoir, in the game. So, um, well, what do you think? Does that suit you? Yes. I mean, do you want it? Are you sure? As long as you manage to get out of there. Yes. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Is it you, or... 
He looks way too happy about your new agreement. Come on, it's not like you asked for his hand or anything. <laughs> well, yes, you offered him to live with you, which probably doesn't differ much in his mind, you suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, you feel awkward now. But if he thinks... Oh no. Oh, give me a break. You realize with bitterness that if you had followed your plan till the end, you would have been screwed. You drove through the forest for more than three hours, and it's only now that you see the first signs of civilization. Suffice it to say that without a vehicle, you would have been lost. Ugh. Not to mention the fact that it would have taken you days before you could see the end of those woods. You stopped looking around. You preferred to rest. With everything that's happened, you barely slept, and you could feel it. He didn't sleep either. But apparently, and unlike you, he doesn't seem to mind. You clear your throat. <clears> throat> You're not tired? I'm okay. He didn't rest at all. Don't you fall asleep at the wheel, friend! You must be worn out. You look more exhausted than me. True. But seriously, you wonder how he does that. You have to say, he really impresses you. Since you've known him, you haven't noticed any weakness in him. No weakness, no sickness, no stress, nothing. And he barely sleeps, yet you often see him doing his hard training. It must be due to his profession, no doubt about that. Every time you try to ask him more personal questions about him or his work, he dodges them. It's obvious that he's hiding things from you. You're pretty sure he's not just some bodyguard. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't think about it much. Are you actually an assassin? It doesn't concern you anyway, and if he doesn't want to tell you, you won't insist. The less you know, the better. You notice that the road you're on has become less rocky. You have just left the beaten track to make way for the city roads. You finally open your eyes. The sun rises, and a new day begins. To see the light of day is comforting. You don't remember the last time you saw a sunrise. You can't believe you would feel so nostalgic seeing something so mundane. Man, how long did he keep you locked up in that room? You can't wait to go home. You miss your boring life. You miss your boring hobbies. Heck, you even miss your boring job. You miss everything normal. How are you going to explain, everyone, that you were kidnapped for several months, probably, and that, oh yeah, this is the guy who did it. Here he is. He's living with me now. And... Wait! Uh-oh. Ha! Huh. Flashing lights? You tried to not jolt from your seat. You were so deep in your thoughts that you didn't even notice that there was a police car, like, just right in front of you. You can't believe your eyes. How lucky! Mm -hmm. You feel like you just got an adrenaline rush. You have to do something, right? Do I? Accept your fate, lol. Uh, I'm gonna save my game here and get the policeman's attention no matter what. Hey! But how are you going to do it? You don't know. And if you don't calm down, he'll notice your agitation. Unless he's already noticed it. He knows that you're going to try something? It won't surprise you. He always knows everything anyway. You don't have the guts to look at him. Nope. There's no way you're gonna check if he's watching you. No, 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 no. It's now or never. If you do nothing, it'll be too late. Do something stupid and dangerous. YOLO! Uh, that's probably something I would do. <laughs> You grab the steering wheel and turn it as hard as you can. So yeah, that's your plan. I mean, drastic times call for drastic measures, Mrs. Lovett. Causing your own accident. Oh no! What a way to attract attention. Hope you were wearing your seatbelt! You drift off the road to crash into a tree. A tree? Again, you are tired of trees. The impact is more violent than you had expected. 
You didn't quite understand what had just happened, but you think you just went through the bumper. Ooh. Huh. You see, the sky. Huh. So you landed on your back. You are on the concrete. You must have fractured something, because you can't move. Well, on another note, the sky is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, looks like you're paralyzed, you guess. You hear screams all around you, but they seem muffled. You feel like your head is underwater. You try to look around you. You move your head. It's the only part of your body you can motion. You can see the road, but there's red everywhere. You look at your body, and there's red everywhere too. Your blood runs cold. Or rather, the little blood you have left runs cold. Your head is spinning. You're gonna die. Heck, you're really gonna die. You're not sure, but you think you hear someone calling you. You have to concentrate to understand what's going on. You feel something running down your face. You'd like to wipe your head, but again, you can't move. You hear someone calling you again. This time, you manage to recognize his voice. He kneels beside you and raises your head. Oh. He puts something soft under your neck. It relieves your head. As you focus a little more on him, you notice that he has blood on his hands. Probably yours. Thank you. Ugh. You know I tried to... The accident. Near police. Dang. Breathing is really difficult. Something pierced your lungs or what? I... I did it on purpose. Take the wheel. I... I... It takes almost all of your energy just to state the obvious. I know. Of course he knows. So why... Still try... To help... Me? Shut up. The ambulance is coming. Huh. The ambulance? If you survive the accident, you'll never survive the ambulance, Bill. Haha. <laughs> ah. You spit blood. You're going to be dry if this continues. There's no way you're surviving this. Your body is broken. Completely. You don't feel the pain, but you are extremely tired. You try to gather the little strength you have left to look at him one last time. He looks like he's going to cry. It's the first time you've seen him like this. You feel bad. Really bad. You have to admit, you feel guilty. Your brain must be broken to think that way. You don't know if you're rambling, but it looks like he doesn't seem to have any scratches. Nothing. Nada. Dang it. Can't be. You knew it. There's no way he's human. Unless it was you who took all the shock from the accident. Well, if this isn't instant karma, then you don't know what is. Your eyelids are too heavy to keep them open. As you fall asleep, he snuggles you close to him. You appreciate the gesture, as strange as it may seem. You hear the ambient siren coming, but you definitely know there's nothing they can do for you. Don't worry. I'll keep you with me. Man, that sky sure does look beautiful. <coughs> Ending five. Blame it on the tree. You died. Okay. What what happens if I accept my fate? LOL. Meh, no. You don't expect anything anymore. You know that trying anything will put you in danger anyway. You decide to nicely go back to sleep. If he is not sleepy... Oh, what is the hell in my eye? If he's not sleepy, you are. And if he ever needs directions, all he has to do is wake you up. Unless he's taking you to another location. You don't know if you slept for a long time, but you feel something gently touching your shoulder. 
we've arrived. You open your eyes, dazed. You notice that you're parked. And just in front of your building. Yes, you told him where you lived. But you never told him the exact address of your apartment or even your street. He just happened to know all that. So... How? Ah, uh, never mind. He probably stalked you or something, pff, as the usual. You're past that anyway. You get out of the car and look around you. A familiar place. You're home now. You have a big smile on your face. You never expected to see this alley again. And even though you brought your captor with you, you can't help but think you've made the right choice. You're not stuck in some gosh darn woods anymore. You turn around to face him, and you see that he's waiting for you in front of the door of your building. You don't need to show him the way to your place. You shouldn't be surprised that he knows exactly where you live. He knows everything about you, after all. You note that the front door is already open. Did you already have a key, dude? You find yourself in the hall. I guess I don't need to show you what floor I live on. You don't need to. But I still want you to go first. He wants to keep an eye on you. Just because he accepts your deal doesn't mean he trusts you. You silently climb the stairs to the floor of your apartment. At this hour, your neighbors must be at work. It's therefore unlikely that you will meet them. You wonder if they noticed your absence. You both arrive at your doorstep. Welcome to my, well, our home. You turn on the lights and head into your living room. He follows you closely. The bedroom is at the end of the corridor, the bathroom behind that door, and the kitchen is on your left. You don't even know why you're explaining this to him. He already knows all that. Ha! Huh, sorry for the mess. Didn't expect to have a roommate. You've never been the most tidiest person around. Oh, he's so happy. It's okay. I don't mind. He just looks at you and smiles. Huh, well... I would have told you that if you wanted to put your things down, there's a place in my closet, but you didn't take anything with you. Not even pajamas. Yeah, dude, I, I probably don't have a size 7X clothes for your big old chest. You're going to have to lend him one. You stare at him for a moment. Not sure he'll fit in yours. If you need something, ask me. And, well, make yourself at home. Thank you. Can I take a shower? Why, yes you can, sir. <laughs> uh, sure. You vaguely show him the way to the bathroom. Again, he probably already knows where it is. Just a few seconds later, you hear the water running. You look in your closet, take the largest fabric you have, and put it on the bathroom doorstep. You know for a fact that it's too small for him, but too bad. It's better than nothing, right? Right. You drop on your sofa as if you had the weight of the world on your shoulders. You don't know what to do. Hmm. Hmm. You turn on the television. You used to watch TV all of the time. Maybe doing this will give you a sense of normalcy. A sense of normalcy. What a joke. Your kidnapper is taking a shower in the next room, and you're watching TV. Good lord. And you're so tired. Maybe you should go to sleep. Yeah, good idea. You lazily reach your room. You don't change and let yourself fall on your bed. Hmm. Wait a darn second. Hey. Oh, how lovely. You have reached the end of this demo. Thanks for playing. Woohoo! Well, that was the Don't Hide updated version. I, I kind of like the ending where I get a roommate. Also, the ending where I get my legs sewn together and become a mermaid. That's, that's not too fun, but that's apparently a good ending. But anyway, I would love to know what you think in the comments. So you can put a comment down there and I will read it. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope.